people are suffering, people are dying, entire ecosystems are collapsing. Before Greta Thunberg would become one of the world's most well-known climate change activists at just 16 years old. Before she would spark a worldwide climate school strike with over 100,000 students getting involved. Before Greta would feature as a voiceover for a song by the 1975 about the climate crisis. Before Greta would win the alternative Nobel for her environmental work in the 2018 Children's Climate Prize. Before she would appear in Time Magazine in 2018 as one of the world's 25 most influential teenagers and in 2019 as one of the 100 most influential people. Before she would receive the award for Swedish Woman of the Year and have a 50-foot mural painted of her. Before she would take on U.S. congressmen. If you're sailing across the ocean and you're picking up trash along the way, and for every one piece of trash that you pick up, there's a boat right next to you dumping out five pieces. How would that make you feel? I would stop dumping my trash in the ocean and tell the other boat to stop dumping their trash in the ocean as well. Before this she would speak wrong. to leaders at the UN. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. And before she would face criticism from many people, including the President of the United States of America. That icy glare has gone viral. Some are calling it a death stare. It's one heck of a glare. Before Greta would have close to 6 million followers on Instagram, over 2.2 million followers on Twitter, and close to 2 million likes on Facebook at the time of this recording. Greta is without a doubt one of the most famous 16 year olds in the world. And she's famous for a different reason than most teenagers these days. I mean, most kids who get famous, they gain their audience through TikTok or trolling online. But Greta has built her audience by going after world leaders, governments, and big oil companies in attempts to slow down the process of climate change. Now, I will say that I think this issue is much more complicated than a lot of the media on both sides is making it sound. It can't be just protests, and it also can't be ignored because clearly things are happening that need to be dealt with. But this video isn't going to dig too deep into the intricacies of climate change. Instead, we're going to take a look at how this 16 year old girl found herself at the center of one of the most politically charged topics of 2019. What's going on good people in the comment section? I hope you're having one heck of a day. My name is Jeremy Heck and today I'll be your host taking you through the life and activism of Greta Thunberg prior to global fame. Here for you of course on Before They Are Famous. Now this video is a little bit different from the usual videos we do about celebrities, artists, musicians, actors, etc. But Greta has been making so many waves in the climate change debate that we thought it would be good to go through her story and show you how she's become such a household name so quickly. All right, let's get into the video. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Greta Thunberg was born on January 3rd, 2003 in Stockholm, Sweden. Greta grew up with her younger sister who was also diagnosed with autism. But Greta's confidence on stage definitely runs in her family. Her mother, Milena Ehrman, is a famous opera singer and her father, Svante Thunberg, is an actor, author, and producer. Milena has appeared in musicals, has performed jazz, is a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Music, and represented Sweden at the Eurovision Song Contest in 2009. Even her grandfather, Olaf, is an actor and director, so relatively famous Swedish family, but it was actually a young Greta that convinced her mother to give up her opera career to help focus on the environmental impact of aviation. Now we'll get into that in just a second. Greta's parents even co-authored a book together called Scenes from the Heart about their family and the climate crisis. So how did a 16 year old get so involved in all this stuff? Well, we need to take a step back first. Greta first heard about climate change in 2011 when she was just eight years old. She was confused as to why there was so little being done on the global stage. And after thinking about it constantly, I mean constantly for years, she became depressed, stopped talking, stopped eating, and there was clearly something wrong. She was eventually diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, obsessive compulsive disorder, and selective mutism, which she has described as speaking only when she feels it's necessary. At first, she viewed her diagnosis as a limiting factor in her life, but more recently, she has said that she feels like her Asperger's is actually her superpower. I'm pretty sure a big time artist, rapper, fashion icon said something similar. I just can't remember his name. A disability is a superpower. Yeah, that guy. For two years, Greta would challenge her parents daily to lower their own carbon footprint. She said in an interview, I have a special interest. It's very common that people on the autism spectrum have a special interest. And she found her special interest and began devoting all of her time and energy into the climate crisis. 
Greta gave up meat and flying and suggested that her family do the same, which is the reason that her mother gave up her international singing career because she couldn't fly out to shows after committing to her daughter's plan. As you can guess, it took her parents some time before they caught on. I mean, this is just me personally, but if my kid told me to give up something that I had worked my whole life to attain, I might be a little bit skeptical, you know what I mean? Sit down, kid. I made you. But eventually her parents supported their child's dream and changed their lifestyle. They wanted their child to feel like she could truly make a difference in this world. In late 2018, those dreams became something that reached far beyond her household. After seeing so many school shootings take place in the US, Greta was inspired by the student protests afterwards. The Parkland students invoked a lot of conversation and Greta knew that similar conversations had to be had about climate change. In May of 2018, Greta won a climate change essay competition held by a Swedish newspaper called, and pardon my pronunciation here, but I figured why not try it out. Sven Svenska Dagbladet. She wrote, I wanna feel safe. How can I feel safe when I know we are in the greatest crisis in human history? I would personally argue that it's the second greatest crisis in human history, standing only behind my pronunciation of that magazine 15 seconds ago. After Greta's paper was published by the magazine, she was contacted by Bo Thorne from Fossil Free Dowsland. The group wanted to do something about climate change and invited Greta to meet with them. Greta came up with the idea for a school strike to raise awareness about climate change, but it wasn't as easy of a job as it originally sounded. Sure, getting kids out of class sounds like a cinch, but a lot of kids didn't really want to get involved and cause a stir within their school. I guess it was one thing to miss school due to a snow day, but a whole nother thing to miss school because of the lack of a snow day. But Greta was determined to make her dreams happen and increase global awareness of the climate problem. So she decided to go ahead with the strike all by herself. So on August 20th, 2018, Greta decided that instead of going to class as per usual for a ninth grade year, she would not attend school until the 2018 Swedish general election on September 9th. This was sparked by the heat waves and wildfires during Sweden's hottest summer in 200 162 years. What Greta was asking for was for the Swedish government to reduce carbon emissions in accordance with the Paris Agreement. But I know what you're thinking. Wow, that sounds like a pretty chill time to just stay home from school for a few weeks and not have anything to do. Well, it wasn't that type of time off. Greta actually sat outside of the Swedish parliament building every single day for three weeks straight during school hours, which is a long time to be sitting outside of a building. And she would sit there and hand out pamphlets that said, I am doing this because you adults are shitting on my future. She came out swinging at the adults. Speaking of adults, her father supports her dreams, but was also skeptical about her missing so much school for the strike. He said, we respect that she wants to make a stand. She can either sit at home and be really unhappy or protest and be happy. A representative of the Finnish bank also quote tweeted one of Greta's tweets to his 200,000 followers, and then some pretty big names started getting involved. In just over a week, her school climate strike had gained international support. After the general elections took place, Greta returned to school, but since she felt like there was still a lot more to do and more attention to be raised, she continued to strike every Friday. It became a global movement as more than 20,000 students in a around 270 cities took place in the Friday climate strike. Currently, according to TED.com, over 100,000 students have been involved in the movement, which now goes by the name of Fridays for Future. In 2019, Greta's prominence rose even more. She published a series of climate action speeches, urging all those in power to take action and began getting invited to speak all over the globe. In August of 2019, Greta sailed across the Atlantic Ocean from Plymouth, UK to New York in a 60 foot racing yacht equipped with solar panels and underwater turbines. The trip was to demonstrate Thunberg's belief of the importance of reducing emissions. And it took her 15 days. And when she got to New York, no, she didn't just rest. She went straight to the UN Climate Action Summit in New York City. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. And if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. The impact of Greta's work has reached everyone from media to celebrities to politicians and even authors. In August of 2019 alone, there was a doubling in the number of children's books being published about the climate crisis, which seems weird because if we're trying to save the environment, printing more books, which are made on paper, seems to be going in the wrong direction. 
I don't know, maybe they're all on Kindle, but that's besides the point. She has even had an economic impact on the climate crisis. Inspired by Greta's work, the wealthiest of the wealthy have contributed more than half a million pounds already to support the Climate Emergency Fund, and Trevor Nielsen, one of those philanthropists, has said that he will be contacting his super rich friends to donate a hundred times that amount in months to come. That is a lot of money. So even if you disagree with her methods, you absolutely cannot deny Greta's impact. I mean, she's even impacted the way people in her country use transportation. In a June 2019 report, Swedish Railways said that the number of people in Sweden taking the train for their domestic journeys had risen by 8% since the previous year. Now you can't prove it was all due to Greta's campaign, but you gotta think it played a big part. But of course, no activism comes without criticism. Many people claim that even though there is a lot of support for Greta, that most people supporting her are not actually doing anything to help the cause. And anybody who is making money off the things that are being protested are never pleased. You know, this happens anytime somebody's dollars are getting hurt. <clears throat> <clears throat> oil companies. <clears throat> One writer claimed that Greta's parents were pimping her out for fame and ignoring her mental stability. But I think the real ones misusing her for fame are people like Ingmar Renshaw, who asked her to be an advisor for his climate startup called We Don't Have Time. And then he used her name and her likeness without permission for profit. So if anybody is using a 16 year old girl for fame, it's that guy. British businessman Aaron Banks even tweeted, what seemed like him wishing harm or at least being okay with harm to Greta's life when he said in reference to her yacht trip, freak yacht accidents do happen in August. Bro, she's a 16 year old who just loves the planet. Calm down and go back to your millionaire lifestyle, all right? Buddy, but many of the attacks on Greta have been refuted heavily. Scientific American published a piece stating that many of Greta's detractors are using personal attacks rather than attacking the facts that she is bringing to the table. But I think Greta said it best in Time Magazine. It's quite hilarious when the only thing people can do is mock you or talk about your appearance or personality as it means they have no argument or nothing else to say. Well said, Greta. As for the future, well, she is still set to attend the COP25 climate change conference in Chile coming up in December. So expect to hear her name in the news more and more, especially with the election cycle coming up. And being that she's only 16 years old, I have a feeling that she's only just getting started. But as for the rest of the story, well, we'll have to wait and see because this is before they were famous. My name is Jeremy Hecht. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate a follow on Instagram and you can let us know who we should cover next. But I'm out for now. Dream good, live better. I hope you have one heck of a day and I'll see you in the next video. And if nobody has told you yet today, I love you.